Well, hello there, YouTube family. I am back with another vlog as promised. Um, I last left my previous vlog on weeks two and three of recovery. So if you haven't saw that video, then go back and watch that and just see all the things that I was getting up to on week two and three. Um, we are now on week six. So this is a real sort of like staple point within uh, the recovery journey. You know, you, the first six weeks are pretty dull. Um, you are literally just learning to get back on your feet again. And today marks the day of six weeks post-op, which just feels amazing to be at this point now in recovery um so i just thought yeah let's do another vlog now let's vlog and i'll show you where i am up to um what my recovery is yeah as always i will share with you the ups and the downs i will stay transparent i will show you what physio exercises i have been doing i will share with you any tips that i have found quite helpful um yeah so last time we linked up I was, yeah, on week two and three. And if you remember, the consultant said that I could get rid of the leg brace, which was just amazing. I mean, I just absolutely loved that day when he said that I could get rid of that leg brace and um, I could start bearing a little bit of weight into the operated leg, which is my left leg, left knee. And I was still on crutches. There was absolutely no way I could operate around the house or outside without those two crutches. Now, moving forward to six weeks, I have just now got rid of the last crutch. So I, I went down to two crutches by two and a half weeks. So the leg brace went two and a half weeks. We got the, the two crutches. Um, and then I would say at about week four, I was then down to one crutch. And yeah, this week, so the start, probably the start of week five, I've just managed now to get rid of the last crutch. So I am crutchless. However, if I need to travel, um, you know, like a, a longer distance, so let's say, for example, I needed to go Christmas shopping, you know, it's Christmas time here right now, and um, if I was like in and out of shops and having to obviously walk across a car park and yeah, you know, just a fair bit of distance, then I would take another crutch out with me, definitely. Because, you know, sometimes if you overdo it, your knee starts to feel really weak. Um, and of course, my walking at the moment is very, very, very lopsided. Um, I'm not putting as much weight into the left side as what I would like to. The reason for that is because my quads and my glutes on the left side has switched off and it's just trying to switch them back on again so that I can walk straight <laughs> without a limp. I kind of walk like this, like a little dip. Um, but yeah, let's, let's, let's take you on this journey with me. So the first thing I am now back doing is being able to walk the dog. So I have a Springer door. She is full of energy and previous to having this knee operated on, I was out with the dog every single day for at least an hour. I fully enjoy getting out into nature and walking and yeah, absolutely is my sacred space walking that dog <laughs> on open fields and in the country and I've not been able to do that and I've really really missed that but I am back now out on fields with the dog but I'm not walking the dog as such um I will throw a ball for the dog so she can 
burst her energy out that way but I will slowly walk around the field and just practice that sort of tapping my heel down pushing into the big toe tapping my heel down pushing into the big toe just to get that um movement going back into my knee joint <laughs> looks like the ocean so yeah I just um was told by the physio that I need to think about every step and think about putting your heel down first so the left heel down and then rolling into the big toe putting the left heel down roll into the big toe because you kind of think you've got this crutch on all the time um crutch leg brace and still and you just sort of like hobble into one side so yeah I use this time now to get out onto the field and practice that movement heel down roll into the big toe um, so yeah let's go let's go out onto the field so yeah here we have it empty field which I will just slowly walk around throw the ball for the dog and work with that walk and work with that physio I mean the only thing you've got to be careful of is wet grass so yeah just make sure you've got the right trainers on it feels so good though to be back outside doing some form of exercise um, I'll currently show you how I walk so just going back to that physio having to remember to bring this left heel down and roll into the big and then just turning back, so propping the heel down and rolling into the big toe. And because previous, I was walking like this. <laughs> so yeah, not good. Um, I was walking with a limp. And that is how I walk. What I do find quite frustrating is the muscle wastage on my left leg as opposed to my right leg. I feel like it's half the size. Um, but yeah, you know, that'll, that'll come back in time. We just need to build some strength and some muscle. Um, yeah, so I'm going to finish this walk with the dog. So that is dog walk, or should I say dog stroll slash limp complete. And that was probably just short of half a mile. And I am used to walking the dog at least eight miles a day. So, you know there's times when I feel like wow I'm doing amazing like look look how far I am now which is right I am I'm, I'm so far ahead than I was at week one so six weeks on now but yeah I'm still so far away you know so it's a bittersweet feeling that I seem to be having all the time and but yeah but just grateful of every step now I don't know whether you guys have ruptured your ACL or torn your meniscus through a sport but most of the time you find that this has happened through a sporting injury and as I was just walking around the field then I thought you know what is stopping you guys from Turning up to training sessions, whether that be rugby or football or netball, and just walking around the court at the times where you would normally be having a game or you would be training, because I just think that that inclusivity, when you are going through such recovery, is really, really important, especially if you have been part of that team for a very, very long time. And, you know, say you trained every Monday, every Friday, and it was consistent, and then it just comes to a stop. You know, think of ways now, if you are off your crutches, where you can be back part of that team, because that is really important for recovery mentally, as well as physically. So during the evenings, I have been continuing with the ice therapy using the most famous bag of peas, which I've had with me now since week one post-surgery. And yeah, I just ice on the top, um, ice in the center, and then ice underneath my knee as well. Uh, because I'm moving around a lot more now, I'm bearing a lot more weight on my operated leg. It, it 
it is more swollen by the end of the day and it's really important now that I don't slip with that ice therapy because yeah like I said the more I'm walking the more swelling is going to happen so yeah just keep it on top of the ice therapy for now I will also show you guys the scars and how they are healing uh, post-op so yeah six weeks let's have a little look if you can see I don't know whether you can see that the light so there is one it's right there uh, and then the keyhole one there and one there and then a little tiny one just here at the top which you can't actually see but yeah it's doing all right i have also been using some rose hip oil on my scars just to help with some cell regeneration i made sure that my scars were healed as in that you know they were closed they weren't open anymore before i started using any sort of oil treatment um but yeah i'll i'll, I'll show you how i apply that on my scars and you know i use this to massage around the knee as well because like i said there's there's still swelling there and i just give myself a little massage around the knee at the back of the knee just to help promote um lymph drainage and break down some of that swelling so yeah just remove the ice grab the oil and just a little squirt and I'm applying quite a firm pressure just really just trying to massage that in it's quite funny round here and down the center I still haven't got full sensation back so it does feel pretty numb still around here I've actually got full sensation back here around the scar but here down the center yeah not not quite there yet but yeah I just massage that in it's healing nicely uh, and then just apply a little bit more put on the knee and just helps us to break down some of that swelling this helps as i am a masseuse as well <laughs> but yeah just trying to trying to break down that swelling and what feels great is i can feel my bone and i couldn't feel that a few weeks ago but yeah i can feel like my kneecap which feels good and that's it I'd probably spend a little bit longer doing this um but yeah there we go and that is pretty much what I do every night you know ice massage and it feels really really good after you've done it um Tomorrow I'm going to take you into the gym with me so I can show you the physio that I've been doing in the gym. I am back at the gym because I can drive again. I can get myself there. I started driving, I would say, around three weeks, especially when I was given permission to get rid of the leg brace. I have a automatic car, so having my left leg to the side wasn't a problem anyway. I can imagine that's really difficult if your car is a manual. So yeah, fortunately, I'm okay in the car now and I can get myself to the gym. So let's go to the gym together tomorrow. Let's, um, let's do some physio. Good morning everybody, it's gym day, so let's get on with some physio. I'll show you all the exercises that I am doing now at six weeks post-op. Let's go.
done with some uh, water therapy as well and some relaxation. Um, yeah, and I try to do that as much as possible. And so that is where I am up to guys, six weeks post operation and I am back on my feet. I am without crutches now, I am without the leg brace, I am back driving, I am in the gym, I am doing my physio, I am swimming, I am walking, you know, short distances. So I feel good, I feel really, really good. And it's just really important for me now to always recognize how far I have come because, you know, it is only six weeks still, it is quite early, yet I still have a very, very long way to go. Um, as you know, I am a yoga teacher and today is the first day that I actually got back on my mat and I practiced a very little mini flow, which felt amazing. It wasn't fast and it was very, very mindful because there's still swelling there. There's still a little pain, bit of pain there. And yeah, it's just making sure that I'm managing that movement and yeah just just looking after yourself yeah and so with that said and done now i'm going to end this vlog here i meet my physio every two weeks and we keep getting little extra exercises put onto the program so i don't think i will probably vlog now until i'm maybe at about four months post-op um, just so that you can see that, that big jump now, because I feel as though I'm going to plateau a little bit now. I feel like my journey so far, it's had a few little dips, but it has been quite linear. I mean, like I said, I have had some dips. I explained on my first couple of vlogs uh, how I felt like those first few weeks were just up and down all the time. These past few weeks, I felt like there's been a lot of growth in the recovery journey. I just have a funny feeling now that we're going to plateau a little bit. I think we're going to plateau and I think it'll be good for me now to vlog at around three and a half months and just to see if maybe I'm back doing some jogging maybe. Um, yeah. Maybe I can get on that, you know, upright bike and be able to use the bike. And so I'm going to leave it here. I'm going to leave it here. Thank you so much for joining me on my journey. And if you have got any questions, if you want to leave a comment in the boxes below, then please do so. And if you haven't already, subscribing to small channels like this means the absolute world. And I shall see you on the next one. Bye.